I was starstruck. I, I, you know, this is Bill Cosby. I mean, he's, uh, you know, above reproach. I thought, you know, I was starstruck. I didn't think there were no red flags at all. More women have come forward with allegations of rape or sexual assault against Bill Cosby. The recent backlash against Cosby has been swift. NBC has Nick's plans for a new show, and Netflix has postponed a comedy special they had in the works. Some networks even stopped airing reruns of The Cosby Show. Bob Parks is with blackandright.com, joins us now from Washington. Bob, you had an interesting video up on the weekend uh, showcasing the difference between a lot of uh, what's happened with the NFL and the No More campaign uh, versus what's happened with a bunch of celebrities in Hollywood. Uh, let's start, compare that with Cosby, though, because you said in the video, you pointed out that a lot of these celebrities, and we'll get to their names in a minute, get special treatment. They keep working. Ray Rice, he's gone for life. He's never going to work in the NFL. What's happening with Cosby here? Is he following, falling somewhere in the middle? I don't really know what's going on with the Cosby thing. I, I, there are a lot of people who are very quick to throw him under the bus, and depending on who you were, let's say if you were another bill, like a Bill Clinton, then we were told, well, we need to um, question the motives of the accusers, even though at the same time, those very same people who, who represent women's groups who would say that the, you, you never should doubt the, the, the integrity of an, of an accuser. But there is a clear double standard between what goes on, let's say, going with the Ray Rice incident. He was banished, basically banned indefinitely from the NFL because of his incident. But if you look at Hollywood, these same Hollywood celebrities who in this PSA, and it's actually it's a group of PSAs, they are, and you look at, even look at their tone, their demeanor when they're looking into the camera, they are talking down to the American people, and not even the American people, because those ads were created, it appears, specifically for fans of the National Football League. They are indicting a group of men, mostly, watching those games as potential domestic abusers. While, meanwhile, in Hollywood, if, and especially when I lived in Los Angeles, all that stuff was local news, so we would hear a lot more of it than the, the, the rest of the nation. The, these incidents of domestic abuse, of um, DUIs, drug abuse, celebrities who would basically laugh at judges and, and disregard what they are told right. as far as rehab, i.e. Lindsay Lohan, the, these people get away with this, and their first... Their first response when confronted is, do you know who I am? And so there's this total well, and, and they'll also where... they'll also imply that it's it's their private life. I, I want to read off some of the, the names. We put the video up at my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Brian Lilly, if anyone wants to see it. But you point out Charlie Sheen, Mel Gibson, Nicholas Cage, Sean Penn, Emma Roberts, Christian Slater, Mickey Rourke, Tom Sizemore, James Caan, Vanilla Ice, Trent Howard, and Alec Baldwin, all guys who... Well, and one woman in there, all accused in some way related to domestic violence. So that's hitting a woman. That's what Ray Rice was facing, and he was not believed. He was not given a second chance. You point out all these people are still working in Hollywood. Yes, I mean, we can turn on the TV and see Capital One ads with Alec Baldwin. We can see movies that are directed and produced and starring some of these actors and actresses. And with very few exceptions, they're still working. Roman Polanski, whenever they mention him in Hollywood, you're, you're thinking that they're talking about God. And he's, he basically fled the country to avoid sexual abuse of a minor. And so this is the thing. When I, when, whenever I and a lot of other people that I know, my fiance, when we, whenever we see these things, we're trying to watch a football mm -hmm. game and enjoy it. And we see these celebrities get in our face. The, the, the hubris of these people who condone pedophilia, you've heard about, and I'm sure everybody's heard about the casting couch. I mean, there's, there's, there, the Internet is, is complete with stories of women who have to sleep with producers and actors to get a chance to get a part. And so when you, so when you hear the Bill Cosby thing coming into play, he, he, there is an element of, of reality that could be inserted into it. But again, we don't know the motives, why it took 30 years for all these people to, to come forward. That's, I think, one of the legitimate questions that have yet to be answered. Yeah, and in light of, and we've had our own issues up here recently with a CBC host, Sean Gameshi. But, uh, I, okay, I want to read off something quickly before we run out of time and then get a very quick reaction. And that is Bill Cosby 
in his statement on this. He said, I know people are tired of me not saying anything, but a guy doesn't have to answer to innuendo. People should fact check. People shouldn't have to go through that and shouldn't uh, answer innuendos. You're right, 30, 40 years. I want to take people at their word on this, but when it takes that long, uh, last 20 seconds to you, Bob. Well, there's one statement that he has yet to make. He has yet to look into the face of the American people and say, I did not have sex with that woman. Now, so if he I'll says that, we know, that. From, we know from history, if you say that, I guess yeah. you're good if you're Bill Clinton. There you go. Bob, great talking to you.